What I have here is the world's first 240 hertz OLED screen. LG's 45GR95QE Ultra Gear Monitor. Now, LG provided the LG Ultra Gear Monitor for free, and this is a compensated video, but I get to take a look at what they've been cooking up and seeing it for the first time in breathtaking 45 inch setup, 21 by nine aspect ratio with an 800 R curve. So immediately taking this out of the box, the one thing I notice is that the 800 R curve is absolutely tremendous. Look at how this just bows on my desk. That is a very tight curve. The radius of a circle of these monitors would be only 0.8 meters, which is absolutely tight and enveloping when you're actually playing the game. But then the second thing I notice is just how thin this panel is to deliver the 3440 by 1440 aspect ratio. Again, at 240 hertz refresh rate with 0.03 milliseconds gray to gray response time. That is tremendously large, tremendously curved, and this is going to be fun to game on. Now, this LG Ultra gear monitor, which has self lit pixels with each providing their own illumination. As you can see right here, as Windows is trying to boot up, you can't see anything else illuminated besides the white text right here. It has white sub pixels in addition to the RGB sub pixels that you find on other OLED monitors, which allows it to have a number of advantages, including the fact that they tend to be less susceptible to burning, which is one of the things that I think gamers are a little timid about when it comes to enjoying an OLED experience for their gaming monitor. And I can tell you right now, as I'm sitting here right here, one of the things I notice with this 800R curve is that it's so wrap around, it's so enveloping of my experience that I'm getting audio reflection directed right back to me. My microphone is picking up not only my voice right here, but it's hitting this monitor, curving around and then coming back. So there's a little bit of reverb when I sit right here in front of the monitor, which is the best gaming experience, simply because of how immersive this monitor is. Now I've investigated a bunch of third-party reviews when it comes to long-term use of LG's panels in previous monitors that happen to utilize it. And what they find is that LG's panels have the least amount of burn-in that you could find out of the alternative OLED panels that are out on the market. Now, LG does include a remote for their monitors, which allows you to control all of the settings that you could possibly want on it. And it includes a nifty little locking mechanism where you can screw in the battery to make sure that it's not going to fall out. But I have mentioned in the past with some of my LG monitors that I'm not a huge fan of the remote actually replacing having a physical control button on the monitor, which this Ultra Gear does suffer from. And if I could just give LG a little constructive criticism, the remote is great. It's a great additional thing to have, but it cannot be the only thing, especially in environments where you might lose it, your children might take it, or you again run out of the battery and now it's a little while before I can adjust the settings to my liking and I have to go unscrew this again, find a new battery, and all of that would be mitigated by me having a physical joystick on the monitor that allows me to change the settings. Let's go ahead and take a look at the menu that they provide. You can see here, we're already running at a clear 240 hertz with a adaptive sync turned on. We can turn HDR on and you have different color modes as well as different calibrations that you can put in the monitor. Now for adaptive sync, you do have G-Sync compatibility as well as FreeSync Premium. You can put in a crosshair if you want, a display and FPS counter and adjust things like the brightness, the sharpness and various other settings that you could get with the picture. And thankfully, LG also includes a picture by picture or picture in picture mode where you can set it up since it is a 21 by nine monitor. You can have two images being displayed side by side or you can have one in the side corner right over here so that you get to enjoy multiple experiences at once. And you can also change the lighting that is on the back of the monitor. You can see that it is changing as I'm going through the menu. You can also have it cycle through the various stages of RGB or even turn it off entirely if that is your preference when it comes to having lighting on your monitor. And you can also set user defined buttons on the remote with one and two. And you can set those to do various things like enable picture in picture mode and picture by picture mode. And then also do things like change the input, enable game mode, set the FPS counter, just giving you some flexibility with the remote outside of just typical button settings. There's also a deep sleep mode to reduce power consumption while it's on idle, but that's enough of checking out the settings. Now let's go ahead and check out the gaming experience. And immediately the contrast looks incredible, especially in a game like this, where there is a lot of grittiness and dark aspects and a lot of path tracing going on so that lighting is more realistic. This is one of the best ways that you could possibly enjoy this game. And all of the colors look beautiful on here. Again, the contrast cannot be understated. One of the things I like about OLED so much is that 
that it is just a different experience to your traditional LCD backlit monitor. I compare it to getting into an EV for the first time, even if it's a low end EV that only costs 10 grand, what you find is that the instant torque response of an electric motor provides you with a driving experience that is fundamentally different than a gas powered vehicle. And that is what OLED is to something like your traditional LED setup. Having each pixel self lit, having the ability to have the black parts of a frame actually be turned off on your monitor gives you, yes, a gaming experience that you've had before, but it is something that once you enjoy, it is hard to go back to traditional LED panels. And especially at 240 Hertz, this is incredibly responsive. Everything is running smoothly and crisply and looks gorgeous. All of the lighting scenarios look as they were designed to look. And you also have LG's anti-glare low reflection screen. As you can see right here, I have studio lights on. You can see I have a bright light illuminating this studio and you're not seeing that be reflected even though this does have an 800R curve where that's actually directly in the path of the curve of the monitor. This screen is bright enough for gaming. Every color pops on this monitor in a way that is hard to describe again because it's experiencing colors. This is an experience rather than something that can be communicated to you orally because you don't have an OLED monitor sitting right in front of you. Honestly, sitting right here dead center would allow me to actually get lost in the world of this game because my peripheral vision is taken up by this monitor. I don't tend to get motion sickness in something like VR. So having this experience wrap around me is a very preferred gaming experience. But in case, you know, you don't wanna be that close, you can still get that effect of a 21 by nine ultra wide while still maintaining a little bit of space from it, especially because it is 45 inches. This is still going to give you a lot of real estate for enjoying a game. One of the other things that LG wanted me to investigate was the idea of OLED potentially overheating and making it so that your gaming experience is uncomfortable, especially if you're sitting this close to a monitor that packs so much power to it, are you going to be feeling that heat? And LG said that in their testing, their monitors stay around 40 degrees Celsius. And in my testing, I actually found that it was a little bit better than that, at least in the scenes and the games that I was playing and leaving it on for well over 90 minutes. I really wanted to see after a long gaming session, how warm are the parts of the monitor that are facing you? And I found that it was roughly 31 to 32 degrees Celsius at the worst parts of it, but mostly maintaining in the 29 to 30 degrees Celsius making it so that the, the monitor's not at all warm to the touch. I, I don't feel it on my face at all. I'm sitting very close to this panel, having a great experience playing this game, but I'm not actually uncomfortable because of it. And it seems like even with all of these pixels being driven, 3440 by 1440, 240 times a second, it still maintains relatively good cooling, especially with the heatsink that is on the back, even though it also does have super thin bezels. So this was my look at LG's Ultra Gear 45GR95 QE OLED 240 Hertz 21 by nine gaming monitor. It honestly accomplishes everything that I thought it would. It is a great gaming experience. Big thanks to LG for providing this monitor for me to check out and for compensating us for this video. We will see you again in the next video, friends.